Yeah. Boom. Hell Boom. yeah. <laughs> We're live. We are live, everybody. I have a uh, super cool guest today. Um, how's How do you pronounce your name? I, I, uh, I assume it's June. It's right? June. June. Mm -hmm. Okay. June Ann? June Ann. June Ann. Okay. Boom. June Ann. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> For yeah, I can, I can hear myself. Oh, um, oh there's a yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it's yes. the feedback that comes from the uh, the YouTube itself. That's fine. Uh, we we deal with those problems every now and then. It should be, it should oh, be you mean right. just mute the volume, right? Yeah, yeah, just the volume. Okay, okay I muted Nothing it. Else. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Um, dude, how have you been, man? How have you been? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, you've seen yeah. my face last year <laughs> when I was there oh, over the campus. Last year? Oh yeah, I've been there. I've been on the campus. Um, gosh, it was like September, October. That's probably oh when God, I saw you. Oh my yeah. God! It's been like I don't like this. Seven, I don't like that time <laughs> flying. <laughs> you don't it's like great. that at all. You don't like hearing uh, that almost a year passed by. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's depressing dude it's just like i'm looking at l looking back at time it's like fuck <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's going it's going way too way too fast it's definitely going to, way too fast so for those who don't who don't know what's going on because someone might, might be asking what, what the fuck kind of campus you're talking about you know what, what's this what that yeah um so june works over at riot games in los angeles it's actually west la um which has one of the most epic campuses <laughs> when it comes to, yeah. I think, any kinds of offices. I would say I, I have never been to Google or Facebook, so I cannot I cannot say maybe about the, you know those billion dollar companies, uh, tech companies. You know what? But... Like, I, I've been to Google once. Like it was like three years ago. They had like thirty thousand people on HQ, and like they had like twenty campuses like us. <laughs> oh, okay. Well then. Yeah, yeah, but you can't compete. Cool. <laughs> but the what I saw was like fuck. <laughs> it's one of yeah, uh, one of the most inspiring places when it comes to, you know, the the office space. It's like it's a perfect office space to be to be at. If if you if you want to have fun and enjoy working somewhere, that's that's the place to be in terms of the office space. Obviously, um, also get busy. Yeah. Just <laughs> <I'm working hard. laughs> yeah uh, i worked with um i didn't work with you uh i work uh with uh, yuzun yuzun kang mm. uh you work with uh eduardo gonzalez right you're in the yes. visual development uh, yes okay yeah um yeah and I, I i was strolling over there i was just like i know this face i know that face i know this face <laughs> you know it's like so many familiar faces when i was when i was there i was actually working from home most of the time I was just coming over for the meetings um but it was a cool experience I actually met you in person um yeah. you know when i was there over, over at the, uh over at riot games and uh it's been a while i was thinking about getting you on um for for a while now it's just like trying to figure out schedules and and all of that stuff and finally Finally, we have you here, man. I'm curious. Yeah, it's, it's an honor. No, nah, it's not an honor. It's just, it's just like a regular <laughs> podcast, dude. It's just like a regular experience. If I would have like a million listeners, then maybe. Maybe I would just like, yeah, yeah, it's an honor. <laughs> it's cool. Um, <laughs> hey, maybe one day, you know, maybe one day. It's just slowly mm -hmm. growing. Um, I'm trying to do my best to make this yep. experience as, as cool, as, as fun, as genuine as possible to all the li to the listeners and people that are genuinely enjoying it so it's all good yeah this is, actually it's my first experience kind of watching youtube like live and looking at all the comments that's pretty cool hey, hey guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of people like some of the people watch as live and then uh there's there's quite a few people that uh watch it later uh once because as soon as the as soon as the show uh finishes mm -hmm. uh it's it's a youtube video at this point yeah. so you can rewatch it later on uh but also there's a growing number of, of people that are actually enjoying it as just regular podcast on uh itunes and and um i just recently added soundcloud as well so you can you, you can head over there if you if you, if you like and uh 
damn uh, have a listen you know you're so ahead <laughs> of time like i need to catch up with the, all the technology <laughs> do you listen to any podcasts at all by the way no not at all you know, i like just just busy when i get home <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah fa- busy with family i guess i mean family mm-hmm. can get you can get you absolutely you know battered with extra work that you're not expecting <laughs> so yeah uh so I let's maybe let's maybe uh get you uh get you know our audience more familiar with who, who you are um mm-hmm. i like to start with that because uh usually there's some cool conversations coming out of it but also you know it's i i, I get to get more familiar with you um yeah. for those who are joining most of the people that are live with us right now they already know who you are most of the people mm-hmm. that join live they join because of the person that is being interviewed or w- being as a guest i try mm-hmm. to not not think of it as a as an interview at all i try yeah. to think of it like a, just a conversation it's like yeah it's, it's like a virtual coffee place you know <laughs> yeah, man. um but yeah let's maybe talk about you and uh figure out where you're from and how did you end up where you where you at right now yeah um i'm originally from korea um i i i, I was born in korea um grew up in korea um i think I've been um, United, in, in the States for like 11 years now. Okay. Um, yeah, and actually I came to U.S. to study concept art. And I actually have, a, um, I was also a student back in Korea, but back then my major was making furnitures. So okay. it's, it's a little interesting background. So I was making <laughs> furnitures for years. Um, but you know what, like I think... I didn't even know that there was a job like concept art and but I somehow I know that oh I love Star Wars and Lord of the Rings right right and I I just realized after a couple of years I was making all my furniture actually look like spaceships <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and and somehow like I I came up with Scott Robertson's books the, all the um design studio press books Okay. And like, oh wow, like these are so awesome and these are you can you can make like you can make this as a job. So that was really cool. That's how I came to states. Yeah, and start over basically. Nice. Nice. So where did you did you study art specifically in the states or did you just um, uh, no. So uh, yeah, I started like art when I was since I was like 15. Mm-hmm. Um and you know like if you If you, you know Chinese um, artists are crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess all the like Asian um, culture uh, back in the days has the same kind of like a uh, really hardcore training on like um, life figure drawings and all this stuff. So that's why I did when I was a teenager. Um, yeah, but I, I basically studied um, art when I was like since I was 15. But once I was started to make furnishes, it's just all making, making. I never got time to actually draw anything so i missed it hmm. is it like part of a uh, regular um education in uh in korea or china where you you get to study those things or oh it's a it's a kind of an interesting culture because in asia when if something becomes popular um it becomes like a huge trend oh, okay. so in asia it's like um there's a huge like private school culture to make students get into the art college. So it's actually much intense than after you get into the college. So high school is the most tough period um, in Korea. Got it. That's why I, I think, I think we're fucked in America then because if, art, <laughs> if art's becoming uh, I mean, look, when, when you go on art station, there's so many, Chinese artists that are like holy fuck like you you look at the art that they Man. produce it's just like I don't if they if they if they learn English fluently we're fucked <laughs> you know I what know. I mean no, <laughs> no English fine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah cause you can't come here and, and you know uh, it's I mean although I think I, I've heard about few artists uh, that you know are not super fluent or don't speak English at all and, and live here and work here. Uh, oh, so yeah. They're yeah, awesome. There's, mm-hmm. there's quite a few of them. Uh, yeah. Really good ones, too. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, 
wow, it's a crazy thing because I, I always I always thought about this, you know, like what does make uh you know, you know why there's so many great artists uh, from from Asian countries, you know, whether it's Korea or or China. Japan obviously has you know a long culture of art. Uh, you, and mm -hmm. I, honestly, I mean, all of the Asian countries have pretty pretty long culture when it comes to art specifically. But mm -hmm. um, I just noticed, like, yeah, it's it's becoming a trend almost, you know. And it's, yeah. it's kind of funny because when you look at films and film industry, it it's heavily catering towards China right now, like <laughs> heavily. You see all of yeah. those, you know, new Transformers movies and sequels and like World of Warcraft movie and all of those movies, they flop here in the US. In most cases, they just are meh, like, you know, either okay or they completely flop. But yeah. then you see sequels and you you wonder why, what the fuck is going on? And then you see like, okay, World of Warcraft made 700 million or something crazy like that. In, or mm -hmm. Warcraft movie made like something crazy, like 700 million in China, whereas it yeah. only made like 50 or 20 something mm -hmm. in US, you know? So yeah. I, was, I was always curious, like what actually makes it so, you know, it seems like it's a cultural thing, which is fascinating, you know, because mm -hmm. um, when you come to US, uh, when you came to US, it, was, it, was it a culture shock for you? Like seeing people and and just behaviors and the way of life and anything like that because it was me for me it was a culture shock per, per, personally i come from europe originally so oh yeah. so it's like wow things here are so so different than you know even though it's you know western culture mm -hmm. you could consider europe to be almost like us like a mini us almost right mm -hmm. but things are so different it's just insane how different things are you know yeah i think i didn't even have a chance to think about it because the the school i went was so spartan you know oh so it's, it is basically like straight four years just school home school home no sleep oh man I, yeah but i was kind of i kind i think everybody get to enjoy it after a while though it's okay. interesting yeah that's true. But yeah, I mean, man, like I, I, I learned a lot. Actually, like so, I have a, I have a younger sister, and um, my sister is already here. And when I first got here, the the first thing my sister um, tried to teach me was like, "Opa, um, please don't make sound when you chew." <laughs> it sounds so dirty. Like, so yeah, so <laughs> those are the kind of courtesy I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like I remember when I came here. Uh, I, I felt like a fucking potato, dude. <laughs> <It's> just, like, <laughs> what's wrong with me? You know, like I don't fit here. You know, it's, it's, there, there are like subtle differences and subtle differences in behaviors that mm -hmm. you know you don't pay attention to because not it's not in your culture when you come where you come from, right? Yeah. And now being here for so many years, I've been here for not as long as you. You've been longer here. You've been eleven years. Right. Uh, for mm -hmm. me, it's been. Uh, seven or eight years now uh, it's enough to sort of like get uh, entrenched in American culture and understand mm -hmm. it better and you know no behaviors and etiquette when it comes to you know being outside talking to people and having conversations whatever right yeah um, or behaving on the street if you especially if you're in LA just yelling at everyone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but one of the one of the aspects that I was I quickly learned, and it's it, now it's like a frustrating thing for me because when I see uh, Polish people and how they behave like tourists, especially, it's like, what the fuck you guys are doing? Like, relax, <laughs> just behave. Like, don't be such a fucking potatoes, you know? <laughs> you know what? But we're safe. We're in we're in California. Yeah. So we'll say yeah. <laughs> Man, like this K Town here is just crazy. The only thing I can complain about is literally just kimchi. <laughs> Everything else is like perfect here. What kimchi is not good? Kimchi is not good. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need mom right. made. Mom <laughs> homemade kimchi. Yeah. Kimchi is apparently super, super healthy for you. It's yeah. like one of those foods that is extremely he healthy for you. Mm -hmm. Um we have a similar dish in Poland. That, oh yeah, um, uh, it's like sour, like more of a sauerkraut 
kind of mm -hmm. kind of kind of deal. It's mm -hmm. a little different, um, but yeah, it's it has same sort of uh, qualities to it. But mm. yeah, man, it's it's weird. It's it's, it's yeah. weird. It's like you learn. You come here and you learn. It's like what the fuck, you know? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Um, so you you weren't you, you weren't studying art. You were studying something else. Uh, you were studying architecture. You said right? No furniture. Oh, furniture. Okay, mm -hmm. that's com completely fucking different thing. <laughs> yeah, no, totally fine. Actually, my wife is architect. So. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, like... I'm to art center. By the way, like I'm reading the comments. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, um, man. Have you have you ever been to Art Center? Yourself? Me? Or, yeah. Uh, recently? No, just in general. Oh, I went to Art Center. Oh, you studied there? Yeah, that's what oh, I'm okay. talking about. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you like it there? Because I I've heard it's like it's one of those places where, it like if you don't have the gut to um to study and and like you know prevail the the amount of work that is being thrown at you, you you're gonna fail yeah literally like until so it's like they have tri-semester and then like total eight semesters you'll be done and pretty much like until third term you're 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 dead you're just zombie like <laughs> it's pretty much like like you have like five studio classes and one classes usually give you like 100 sketches per week so that totals up like 500 sketches a week Damn. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's a proper amount of um, of practice you need when it comes to yeah. art. <laughs> yeah. I have pride because like those kind of all paid off, you know. Yeah. So yeah. when when did art itself start to you? Like for you, you know, like when did you realize, hey, I want to be an artist. I want to work in this industry, and you know. Um, I think I want to be an artist since I was very, very young, like maybe since I was three. Um, because I, I, um, my, my, my aunt was an artist, so that has okay. a huge influence. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, like in gen like, like other people, like in, when I was in high school, like, I, I just wanted to draw cars and want to be like cool trans um, vehicle designer. Um, yeah, but like I said, like after I st um, started making um, my spaceship um, chairs, I realized, oh, I, I need to have this as a job, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty late, actually, um, compared to other um, friends. I started kind of late. So, uh, what age? I mean, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really matter. To guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, I was, um, I was over twenty-five. So, okay. how how old yeah. are you right now? I'm curious. Uh, should I say that? Um, I mean, you, I'm, you don't have to say exactly. You can say like, mid thirties. Uh, I'm in. I'm definitely in thirties. Um, I'm somewhere around mid thirties. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. We're the same age then. <laughs> cool. 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 Cool, man. We're same cool, man. age. <laughs> Hell yeah! It's just that's the conclusion of this whole discussion. We can end here. I know. <laughs> How? Uh, I because uh, I mean it's a stupid question, and I know that, but honestly, uh, it's been asked so many times, you know. And and mm -hmm. when you mentioned like, oh, I started pretty late when it comes to you know becoming an artist uh com compared to your peers uh the more i've been in this industry and the more i've been learning the more i realize like the age itself doesn't really matter it's more of your mindset and you know your dedication to what you want to achieve uh, mm -hmm. I, I feel like i don't know like I've seen examples of artists that became really successful and, and really good at what they do really late in their lives. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I also seen, you know, prodigies out there that are 18 and you're like, what the fuck is going on here? You know, yeah. Like guy, there's this guy. Um, I've had him on the, on the podcast before. Uh, Adam Grazio. Mm -hmm. That dude is like, what, 19? Something Damn. like that. Yeah. He's super young, super talented yeah. too. But he's talented in a way that, you know, he he works like a fucking workhorse, you know? Yeah. Um, and that, 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 that's like this unsaid or, you know, like when you watch the shows and everything seems to, like when you watch TV, everything seems to be like an overnight success. Mm, but, then, yeah. but then behind the scenes, it's like a nightmare. Like there's many years of failures and 
hard work and not having friends and all of that stuff. Oh man, like <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, then, so. you know, like you know, like for example, like um, I went to school with John, John Park. Yeah, I always talk about this. Like, <laughs> I <laughs> so sitting next to John in the class is such a pain because he's a workforce. <laughs> So everybody pull up all night, and in the, it's the morning class. And after 50 minutes of lecture, like, your teacher gives you a like 10-minute break. I just want to go to cafeteria and have some coffee. And John just pulls out his sketchbook and starts drawing me. And I'm like, what the <laughs> f- what are you doing, man? And John's like, oh, Hyung, I suck at, I suck at heads. Like, I need to improve. Like, what the? And then everybody starts pulling out their sketchbook and doing the same thing. Because they're embarrassed. Yeah, but everybody wanted, wanted to be like him. He was already so good. So it, John John is the guy like who has my most my respect. He he works a ton every day, and yeah, that's John is, that's totally mileage. Yeah, that guy is a a beast. Like in the in an actual proper meaning of of the word, you know, he's actual beast mode. You know, he is um, a beast. Yeah, I, I don't envy anyone who has to work on the same project with him because I I have an experience working with someone who is an absolute killer when it comes to work. I worked on the Ghost in the Shell together with uh, Vitaly Bulgarev. Yeah. And that was pretty man. stressful experience. Oh, man. Vitaly, oh, man. Um, yeah, Vitaly, is, he's... I mean... When you get a call from a director saying, "Hey, can you work as fast as Vital- Vitali or something like that?" It's like uh, to you, man. That's uh, it hurts. Hurts. Wow. <laughs> hurts. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So <laughs> you you live, you learn, you you realize that, you know, there are people that are on an absolutely different level than you will ever be. <laughs> yeah. And then just you just move on, you know, crying in the corner. <laughs> totally, man. Totally. So uh, you moved here, and did you? Um, so when you moved here, you, you were studying furniture and all that stuff, that weird stuff uh, that you didn't end up actually doing. Did it actually help you at any way in your in your art at at all, or was it more um, like uh, an episode like, of your life? Like experience of making furniture? Yeah. Um. Actually. Like half and half, I'll say, um, because I was, I was, I always had to plan plan perfectly before I make something to reduce the like a like a failures, right? Because yeah. the materials are so expensive. Right? <laughs> so I, I I I had to think. I, I I think I learned how to think practically, um, in a very detailed scale. So that really helped me. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got it. Makes sense. Hold on a second. Like who's Gabu Gabu? I don't know. I think I think I think she knows me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I only pay attention to uh, <laughs> questions later on. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Don't don't worry about it at all. Don't worry about it at all. So uh, how how did you end up at Riot? Um. Actually, I applied. I think. Um. Yeah. Um. It's been four years and a half. Um, before Riot, I was working at Disney um, on the TV show Tron Uprising. Oh yeah, you worked with um, Alberto. Yeah, Alberto Mielgo. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Nice. Yeah. Did you, how did you like that? Oh man, Alberto is amazing. Yeah, he is. <laughs> first, like when I first saw uh, the packet of the project, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" You know, like <laughs> I never, never seen this worse before, and it's so new to me, and it's a shock. And I, I really need to jump in and learn from this guy. And of course, like it was a it was a really fun two years. I learned a lot, but also Alberto was just a freaking lovely person, man. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, I want to have him on the podcast soon as well. Um, oh, it's just yeah. he's super Shit. busy. So mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things where you talk to people and they say yes, and then you don't hear from them because they have like twenty million things going on. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. I'm so, I'm the same thing. I'm the same way, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I do have so much going on in my life and I'm actually trying to scale down the amount of work and the am- amount of things that I'm doing cuz I've been, you know, working my ass off for 15 years and it's like, oh, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I think I need to slow down a little bit. So, you know what? If you're like a beautiful woman, Alberto will be right there. 
I can promise. <laughs> can guarantee, guarantee you that. I remember his uh, his video that he made. Uh, I think he was with the Belladonna, and he was talking about uh, um, talking about his art and why he's uh, painting porn stars and like why like people being outraged about you know him painting uh, porn stars. Like, and he was saying like you know why I don't get it. I don't get why people hate Vajayna. <laughs> <With his, with laughs> um, it was like so, okay. it was so funny, dude. I, exactly. I, I so I feel so privileged because I, I've been asking a lot of questions through two years. And I learned all those lectures during the lunchtime from Alberto. <laughs> because basically Alberto was like, June, think about it. You came from your mother's vagina. Vagina is my god. <laughs> He's uh, he's yeah okay. he's he's a wonderful <laughs> human being. I love him. <laughs> he's such a cool guy. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, he was good. Did you did you did you guys work uh, in the office together? Or I can't remember because I I know he reached out back then, but I didn't I couldn't pick up that project. I was not even on the green card just yet, so oh, yeah. it was not yeah, even it possible. Was, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in the office. So yeah, we had a team and like everybody sit there and like yeah work together. Who else was there over there? I know uh, Rob Rappel was helping on the show. Um, um, yeah, Rob. Rob was actually like one or two months, and um, also, um, do you know Eric Kennedy? Um, Eric Kennedy actually works with me right now in the same team. He's our yeah. lead. Yeah, yeah. So Eric was there. Um, our um, um, director was Charlie Bean, and oh, the character director was um, Robert Valley, mm -hmm. and. The, uh, all the vehicle um, director was um, uh, Daniel Simon. So it was like a superstars. It's pretty damn. amazing. Damn. Yeah, damn. <laughs> damn. And you, yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's a hell of a team, dude. That's a, like uh, yeah. like a dream team to work to work from, uh, work mm -hmm. with, and and mm -hmm. to learn from too. It's like I think when you're uh, when you're surrounded with you know such people, you, it's it's. Even if you don't learn anything from them, you, you're at least so jazzed by the fact that you're working around such names that you're pulling yourself uh, to like your highest limits, right? Oh yeah, man! I was just totally happy just sitting next to those guys. Those guys are amazing. Yeah, yeah, those guys are. Mm -hmm. Daniel is now is just doing some crazy stuff with vehicles. Um, I haven't. I don't know if he if he still works in films. I'm curious. I wish I could have him on the rips on the too. show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he rips, dude. He's he's one of the best. In terms of like oh, pure course. design, in terms mm -hmm. of pure design, I think he's one of the best out there. Oh when yeah. It comes to like designers. Damn. Um, yeah, there's not not that many names that I I could say without a heartbeat that they're exciting to to watch. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's certain mm -hmm. names that you like. Oh, they're they're pretty cool yeah. artists. You know, they're doing pretty good job and. All of that stuff, but then there are names where when you when you say them, it's like an aura, whoops, an aura of like, wow, damn, damn, <laughs> <laughs> like ah, oh. yeah, man, Daniel Sense is so good. Like when I first saw that um, the book, the first of our book, like, like, like you know, like probably a lot of people thought about that, you know, like oh, I want to kind of want to make a concept book with actually like three nice 3d renderings and make it realistic yeah but then bam when when that came out i was like holy shit you know it's one 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 thing to think about something and the other thing to actually do it you know <laughs> yeah it's completely two different beasts uh when it comes to that because doing something it it you know how it is with art yeah i'm pretty sure you have that experience quite a lot where you, you have an idea, you want to do it, and then, like, fuck, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, why yeah. I cannot, why I cannot do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My hand is retarded. <laughs> it moves weird. <laughs> it doesn't create Making what I need life. What I need it yeah. to create. Yeah, it's, yeah, there's no connection in the brain just yet. Mm -hmm. You have to sort of, like, train it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I had a chance to meet him um, when I was working on that project. It was one project that I worked on, one of the films over at, uh, Warner Brothers was actually one of the first films uh, that actually started my my film career. Honestly, um, mm -hmm. I was working with James Chinland, who was uh, later he's he was a production designer on the first uh, 
Planet of Apes or the second one, maybe, oh, or, nice. or even the first and second. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the race, race of the planets of the apes, and I think yeah. Dawn of the planets of the apes. Mm -hmm. I think both both of those. Uh, but we worked together on the project, and the director was Rupert Sanders, and um, and that that's I I got to meet Rupert through that project, and thanks to J uh, to James, and that's how I ended up working uh, on uh, Ghost in the Shell. And, Damn. Uh, and then um, and yeah, Daniel Simon was there. Like I was working with Steve Jung. Uh, you know Steve? Have you ever met him? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's super super cool guy. Um, I was working with Steve in the same room, and then yeah, and Daniel actually because I was there for like three weeks. Um, I, I was like right around the corner of leaving Naughty Dog, and I was helping out mm -hmm. in the studio. Uh, over there for two or three weeks and um yeah and as soon as i left um because i then like continued from home like the project shut down like a couple of a couple of days later oh uh, so it was like yeah whatever i was kind of <laughs> bummed because like i was literally like two two or three days away from getting enough days to be in the union i in see a, in a in a film union which would be like big big so it's kind yeah, of bombed. Get in, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I made those good connections, you know, meeting uh, Rupert Sanders and all of those guys. So yeah, it's 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 an experience when you get to be in the room with, um, you know, really prolific people, and you know, either whether it's amazing artists or directors or production designers, you know, it's like mm -hmm. wow, it's it's a completely different experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, so you applied to. Um, to Riot Games, did you, did you did they take you like right away? I'm pretty sure they did, right? With your your skills. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, actually, like yeah. So after two years, like my project, our project also got shut down. So I was actually looking for a job. Um, I was pretty desperate because I was also visa status. Oh, okay. Yeah, unless I get I can get a job in like a couple of months, I I, I I was gonna be kicked out from the country. You were on um, the student visa. Um. Yes, I was on a student visa. Oh no, actually, I was on the H one B. Okay. Um. Yeah, but H one B, like, if you cannot transfer it, then you you gotta leave. So. Right. Yeah, but I was looking for a job, and like, um, yeah, I I, I luckily got a job. I think. <laughs> so that's how I. <laughs> was that uh, so? You, I, I'm, I gather you're on the green card right now. Yeah, after that many years, know. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a bitch, right? Just if I can get that, get yeah, that thing it's going. A bitch, and like, if I think about my life here, like, I, I, you know, you know what? We like, I've been, I've been pretty. It's been pretty tough, you know. Like, I had student visa, H one visa, then like, you got to get married, and like, then another green card. It's it's a whole lot of process. Like, it's all a lottery, right? So yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about that for a little, if if you don't mind, because yeah. it's a it's a it's a pretty common question when it comes to, you know, people that are interested in coming to U.S. You know, and mm -hmm. a lot of people look at, look into things like, oh, I'm gonna get this cool job, or you know, you know, they're looking for opportunities, which which makes sense. Uh, you know, you want to work for like good companies, be part part of the uh, cool projects, and work with really cool people. But, right. but rarely anyone talks about the hardships when it comes to like moving countries and and de dealing with immigration and all of that stuff. It's just nerve wracking. <laughs> it is. It is. How Damn. was your experience? Because is your family over in Korea or uh, you moved here with family as well? Oh no, my my parents are all back in Korea. So I met yeah me and my wife yeah I actually we came together a long time ago. So she was also like same status as me, right? So, but my H one B experience was like first like I, actually I was super lucky because um, when I was getting H one B, basically H one B is a lottery because there's so many applicants. But when I was applying, it was like under um, uh, under the numbers, so which means it's hundred percent chance you're you're gonna win. But yeah. the problem was that's why why I was at Disney and. Um, my my producer just keep forgetting the the promises, so I, I st like kept bugging her. But <laughs> I need to I had to go back to Korea. 
I think you're breaking like up burning right inside <laughs> um you you've been breaking up a little bit um curious what's that, that about yeah i couldn't hear uh the last uh, last few things you said like last few words you were breaking up a little bit through the skype oh Do you want to... oh okay i'm, so I'm curious if we, uh, we should try reconnecting to... yeah. oh, okay let me try to reconnect yeah sorry for that guys that's uh that's what's happening sometimes when uh, boom should be live now yeah there was a lag right yeah it was uh it was breaking up on the skype i think uh it was something going on there uh it's much better now i think yeah skype does that something sometimes um your camera is off by the way oh i think it's still happening hold on a second yeah i can hear you uh, yeah i can see you and hear you well so it's all good now okay all good all good um yeah, so you, I, I've missed the uh, last last couple of uh, words, I think. Oh, uh, so like I literally got my visas three days before I had to go back to Korea for my wedding. Damn. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> that happened. That's so stressful, dude. That was... And you, you didn't even know, right? You were like, is it going to happen or not? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, what? should I cancel my whole thing? Yeah. My family's going to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for those who, because there were a few people asking, oh, you, get, you have to get married. You, you don't have to get married, but if you want to have your si significant other in U.S., you have to be married to that person, because uh, then <laughs> she will not get visa at all. Uh, yeah, like if you are, if you have H one B, um, and if you get married, um, who's non um, immigrant, then um, she can have like a spouse visa, but. Um, like she cannot work. Yeah. So she's just staying. Yeah. Yeah. That that is the hardest part for people to understand. It's kind of crazy too because there's other strings attached. One, which is if you work on H one B, and if you work on visas, it basically means you're working for a company, uh, and that's yeah. it. You cannot freelance. You cannot just like, oh, there's this cool project that you know I got asked to work work on. Uh, mm -hmm. No, you're not gonna work on it because. Uh, mm -hmm. you're uh, you're on a visa, so fuck off. <laughs> That's basically yeah. how it looks. And I, I was like, for the f for the first uh, time, I was shocked how stupid the system is, you know, because it is stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, yeah. I wanna I wanna pay taxes. Like, I can make more money and pay taxes. You know, <laughs> exactly. I can make mo more money for this country. <laughs> Allow me. <laughs> I'm already here legally. Yeah. Allow me. <laughs> that kind yeah, of stuff. Like yeah. Yeah, it is stressful in the family too. You know, when you when you have family and you know that they cannot do anything, they just have to like if they want to be here, just sit around and be here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much it. it yeah, sucks. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, this sucks. Like some people really get depressed by it. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. don't blame them. I mean, it it is super stressful just to go through the whole process and you know make sure that everything is working fine and whatnot. It's it is. You know, it's one of those things that you don't want to go through, but you have to. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it is what it is. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, you're already here and you're, you, you know, you're having a pretty good job. So it worked out. Yep. Yeah, man. It's good. Good stuff. Uh, how many mm -hmm. years have you been that, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Riot Games. Uh, four years and a half now. Four and a half. Okay. That's cool. You and you are in um uh visual development, right? Yeah, um, I'm a, yeah, it's a called world building team. So, building. we're in charge of creating worlds for League of Legends. Uh do you want to talk about that a little bit? I mean, I know there's certain um topics when it comes to that that are under NDA and obviously you cannot talk about, but you guys had recently this big release, right? Uh, when it comes to world building, yeah, yeah. Like the announcement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I can talk. Like, so basically, like we're trying to um, make um, the universe of League of Legends much more interesting as a IP. And the thing is, like, Riot Games uh, started with the 
game actually um, before we actually thought about any kind of depth about that IP, which is League of Legends. Yeah. So we made um, Legend first, and then we started thinking about oh, the, there's a lot of possibilities to talk about what these characters, where their characters live, like what are those cultures and history. It's like basically like making on Middle Earth um, rather than just writing a story about Middle Earth. Right. So yeah. Like for example, like so, like the world is called um, Rune Terra, and we have more than twelve factions in uh, League of Legends world. So we're working really hard to how to visualize them and make it into an interesting um, um, world with a also with a uh, very um, interesting narrative as well. Yeah, that's pretty. Cool. I mean, I, I remember when I so the first time I saw League of Legends and. I actually got interested in what you know what the game is and um, you know how it plays when I started working uh, with Yuzun and I obviously cannot say exactly what I was doing there. Mm-hmm. It's all under NDA. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that stuff is under <laughs> NDA. Um, but yeah, I was I was just like I started you know playing it just out of curiosity you know. Because it's Riot Games, it's it's one of the biggest companies uh, when it comes to video games companies in U.S. You know, American companies. For those who don't know, it's actually owned by Tencent, right? It's the yeah, the, the it's Chinese. Not owned by Tencent. Yeah, and the uh, Tencent is like the biggest Chinese multimedia company. They, I think they do more than just video games. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of crazy because from what I from what I heard in China, a lot of people think that the game is made by Tencent, <laughs> like the, the the that company. And Riot Games like doesn't even ring the bell <laughs> for a lot of players, which is kind of crazy because you see the logo when you play the game. <laughs> yeah, man, um, it's a huge, huge company, and it's big in China. It's like I was surprised how fucking huge it is in China, you know, like the game yeah, it's, it's China and Korea. Hmm. It's, it's ba- in China right now, it's basically like Alibaba and Tencent. Those are the biggest two giants. Yeah. yeah. So they're absorbing everything right now. Yeah. I mean, in the US, we're going to have Amazon being one of those. <laughs> it's already yeah. there. They mm. just recently purchased, uh, they bought Whole Foods recently. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Heard that. So, <laughs> that's crazy. That is crazy. so crazy, dude. <laughs> the world we live in. You're going to be getting your uh, groceries online, getting people just <laughs> robot like drones fucking delivering groceries. Just getting lazier and lazier. Lazier and lazier. <laughs> so you, you've you been in the world building team, which is basically trying to figure out the lore of the, mm-hmm. of the game. Because I, uh, I remember seeing, um, I was always interested in, in, mm, rpg games like rpg as a genre in general you know so i remember you know seeing development of different rpg games and world of warcraft was one of the biggest ones when it Mm -hmm. comes to like mmos and mmorpgs for longest while and then you know um there was obviously dota all of those games and then you know league of legends came out and Mm -hmm. people were raving about it and I, i remember i checked it out Wow, like right at the beginning, and I was like, "What is this bullshit?" <laughs> you know? Just stop, stop, like right there. But the game uh, came along, came a long way, and it was always uh, interesting to me because, like, it felt more like a like RTS kind of game, but yeah. without, like, there was no really any narrative. It was just like, you know, choose your character or whatever, and just bang, basically. You know, mm-hmm. so. Uh, so it was kind of interesting to see that you guys started to actually think about the narrative a little more and look into into the world. How was your um how was your experience doing that? You know, do you guys have a lot of freedom when it comes to world building or um you know, did you work with some writers? Like what is what, what was the process for you from oh, a yeah, concept well, art uh, perspective? We have, uh, we have a lot of freedom to explore. So that's pro- probably the best part of our team. Um our team is basically like half artist and half narrative team. So narrative team, like all the writers, uh, creative writers are actually in a huge charge of um, making all the stories because I think 
like developing an IP as a team is is not just about how good you you are. It's it's it's, it's literally about how you're going to get aligned with everybody, and everybody is like talking the same thing. I think that's the toughest part uh, when you work at a team. Getting on but the same I think page, it's necessary. Yeah. Yeah, get on the same page. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's it's difficult. Like, I mean, you know, just ideas aside, and you know, what are the ideas, good or bad? It's just like, you know, you have to have the right characters in terms of like yeah. what kind of character you are as a person, and you deal mm -hmm. with egos, and you know, you're gonna have artists, especially some of the artists. I've been through the video game uh, industry for a lot, a long time, almost over a decade, mm -hmm. and the biggest issue I had and still have, I, I don't work in games that much anymore, um, mm -hmm. but the biggest issue I always had was the ego, you know, the ego aspect. Everyone who's just like, I think I made it, you know, this is the this is the best company, fuck, like, I'm so good, you know, and then just like, yeah, how you deal with that kind of people, you know, <laughs> that was always frustrating yeah. to me. Do you, do mm -hmm. you uh, encounter that a lot in your, you know, in line uh -huh. of work? I, no, no, not really. Like Riot is actually so one of the most um, one of the first thing that Riot really cares about is culture. Yeah. So um, we're very, very discreet when you uh, hire people. So like, luckily, like I, I like we, I, I think I have like nice people around me. But even though like the conversation in the room, like let's say like fifteen people in the room, or pretty much casual and happy of course like when we like boil down to the specific story or visual like everybody's gonna have a different idea yeah so getting on the same page is, is still tough <laughs> yeah yeah but i i could tell when i was there over at uh on the campus it's just like it it feels different than your regular video game company you know do you do you work mm -hmm. prior mm -hmm. to Riot? Did you work in any other video games before, or that's that's your actually first? Um, no, that was my first video game. Like I did an internship before at LucasArts, but that was really short. Like I didn't know right. anything. Yeah, because so, it's yeah. it's um, it's a completely different culture. I and you're right about that. It's like it they do spend a lot of time making sure that they hire the right people and you can mm. you can feel that because, because when you're on a campus it feels like everyone is sort of following the same direction you know mm. it's like there's this atmosphere of you know dedication towards the the game you know mm. you have majority of the people that work for riot games being huge fans of the game itself so they're like basically gamers you know like that's my favorite game and i'm working for the company you know that that happens every now and then but it's very rare like it's it's you know you might have similar aspects of the culture when it comes to blizzard in the blizzard mm -hmm. games um mm -hmm. but outside of that i mean from my again it's a very subjective uh opinion but outside of that it's usually just like we're making cool game but it's you know most of the companies really make products that are different all the time. You know, they, they, they make different games. Riot Games made one game and they're doing really fucking well. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like all dedicated I, towards developing that one, you know, ever evolving product, which is which is awesome because it's just like it that that product alone is making the culture, you know? Yeah. So um but trust me, we we want our second one. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Unless it's just Riot Game, not games. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's true. That's yeah. true. Uh, how do you actually feel about that? Because like working on one IP for a really long time, it, you know, I, I wonder how you deal with that. Because I, I personally, you know, I like to change, you know, uh genres every now and then or, or try different things and i do it mostly in my uh personal work because i just i think i just stopped relying on professional work to deliver uh, what i need mm. artistically you know i'm just curious yeah. about your experiences when it comes to that um so i think i still really enjoyed it because um I still have a lot of space to explore, even though I'm working on the same IP. And talking about genre, like I'm I'm a fantasy guy, 
like I don't know what happened, but at some point, like I really just like um, fell in love with just like fantasy more and more. Mm. And like, sometimes I want to do, do sci-fi. I, I I think I do it on my personal works. I think so. I I think I'm good. I, I'm ha- I'm having a lot of fun, actually. Hold on. Let me actually pull up your work. Let's see, show show the peeps. <laughs> the peeps. Yeah, let me let me show you guys, because uh, yeah, I, I love your works, dude. It's pretty oh, thank you. Works. I love your works too. <laughs> a little uh, a little festive, patting each other's back. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me make sure people can see it. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, there we go. Yeah, you worked on the you you you're you have pretty pretty darn cool style, man, and the pretty cool style of work. I remember seeing some of your um, built over stuff when I was you know when I was over there. I think the first time I was over at Riot Games, I was actually talking with Eduardo. Uh-huh. Um, you do you work with Eduardo? Uh, by the way, oh, or yeah, is yeah it... he's the one. He's the one who hired me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have Eduardo next week. Um, yeah, on our cafe, it's gonna be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I was talking with him, and I, I was seeing this this work way back when, and I was like, "Who's that guy?" <laughs> and then I learned it was you. So it's like, "Fuck, okay." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, those those images are are great. Um, Thank you. I wonder if you, because um, you know, most of the stuff you're doing for Riot is. I guess uh, more environment art related, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that your? You, you would say that's your forte, or that's just something you just ended up doing for most of the time? Um. So talking about like, yeah, like it was kind of like focusing more on environment was my thing when I got got hired. Um. But now it's like we we jump around. I, I jump around a whole lot of things. Sometimes props and sometimes characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I personally think like like still like doing character is still my weakness so i try to put like figures in my personal works a lot that's why i'm doing personal works right uh, to fill gaps but yeah I love, I love doing environments yeah your environment work is awesome i can tell so when you when you try to draw characters like how do you approach that because that's a question that uh a lot of people are you know would ask and i know you're teaching over at um Brainstorm, uh, yeah. brainstorm, yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, but you're teaching uh, environment stuff like world building, right? So similar, yeah. similar things you're doing over at Riot Games, yeah. Uh, exactly. So, so anyone who's interested, I, are you still having classes there? It's like with with brainstorm, it's the physical classes, right? So you're actually it's a, it's a physical class in Burbank. So yeah, I, I just had one yesterday. Oh, cool, <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. Is it like a four week, eight week, ten week? Um... It's ten week class. Okay. Yeah, ten weeks. So, yeah, if you if, if you're gonna have do- those opening up, you can always obviously let me know. I'll, I'll blast it out. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, John Park and John John, John would thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, those guys are you know good friends, good good friends. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and you know, I think someone was asking like, you know, is is it a competition for you guys over at La- uh, Lawrence Square? It's like no. <laughs> We don't we don't look at it like this way, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. If if we genuinely enjoy someone doing good shit, we just we just blast it out. Like you know, for instance, Grant Warwick, you know, he he does those uh, awesome <clears throat> uh, V-Ray uh, courses. Uh, he is one of the best yeah. V-Ray course, I would say. Like if you want to mm-hmm. learn V-Ray, go to Grant Warwick. I'll just I would just say it right right away because he's just the guy. He's he is just the guy, you know. Yeah. Um. But well, you, I, you also um, you you you're also running uh, Learn Squared, Ash, right? Yeah, it's me, Ash, and and Andrew. We're, we're yeah, uh, we're running yeah. it together. Yeah, it's yeah. it's an experience. It's a little different than uh, than Brainstorm because Brainstorm is mostly physical location and and you know mm-hmm. actual physical classes. Mm-hmm. What we do at Learn Squared is it's all online. Like yeah. We don't have a physical space. We you, all the phone calls. We don't have office. 
we all like man operate. that's crazy like you guys have to make a good system I, I really admire that yeah it's been a dude oh my god it's been a lot of work to get, I get. everything together because we we built the the website like the whole system um you know how everything works and basically almost everything from scratch you know we obviously use some some different software and uh methods that you know it's you're, you're not basically building everything code by code but mm -hmm. um we do have like a back-end developer who's helping us we have front-end developer um so you know basically building the art the way the way the website looks we're actually uh working on getting a new website um oh cool completely different experience so uh yeah we hired we hired um one of our students actually <laughs> nice super that just happens yeah yeah that just happens like you, you get those students that are just amazing and and like what the fuck you're like you are you're a student what like why <laughs> you're already good <laughs> you know what i mean I know. yeah so we have one of those guys uh building a site for us and Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 crazy because you just have to think about everything and like all of the small things uh, become big things because, mm -hmm. you know, they just take a lot of time to uh, to develop and manage. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you because uh, you you obviously work in your figures and I don't think you need to work that much. I mean, <laughs> they were pretty pretty good already. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks, but yeah, I, I struggle a lot. What is your process Super. when you when you work with figures? Do you sketch them? uh you work with sketches or you work with references you know i, I just want to know i have a i have a ton ton of reference because i i don't know like i cannot <laughs> sketch like um some other great artist you know like so john. <laughs> yeah like john so it's literally like learning process for me so so i know that like it's a personal artwork the good thing about it is like there's no deadline so i, I maybe i cannot do it fast but let's at least let's get it right so i just struggle until i get there right but I, right. I use a lot of 3ds and like i use a lot of references but i yeah, try to understand what's the core thing and translate it into my own so yeah. you don't you know you don't feel that stigma of like oh you're using references that means you're not an artist Maybe that's true. <laughs> Maybe that's true. <laughs> Man, I um, when did you when did you join industry? Did, like actually, you know, painting and working in the industry. What 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 year was that? I was I'm just curious if you were still uh, experiencing um, that you know photo bashing reference stigma that used to be you know ravaging. Oh, <laughs> I was like, actually, I I I I I pretty bad at photo bashing and. I really wanted to be good at it, but I just realized oh, I'm so lazy, or my system is totally broken. Right. So I just realized I was. This sounds weird, but I I rather paint because because I'm lazy. <laughs> but when <laughs> but that's did, what when happened. Did you, I, I did, always kind of avoided it. Because I know you you've been painting and and you want to always be an artist, you know, ever since you were young. But like, when did you <laughs> actually start looking into entertainment industry and working in the entertainment industry? Like if you could put a year in which you started. That was, that was the moment when I actually came to U.S. with my um, because I wanted to be a concept artist. So that was right. start. And you know, right after I graduated school, that's pretty much when I actually started my career. It's around 2006, I guess. 2005. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, like 2009. Oh, okay, okay. It's really yeah, late. so yeah. so funny thing. So I think 2009 it w was already when working with photos w were not so frowned upon you know mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but when i was starting 2004 up until 2008 ish i would say like if you would use a photo in your image people mm -hmm. would just like fucking tear you a second asshole dude would be like oh you're using photo you're not a real artist <laughs> you know what i mean uh, that was already then oh yeah 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 like yeah. 2008 2009 it, it was dying off already yeah, it was like yeah. on the on the on the other side of the bell curve you know but i remember well especially when i, I guess especially when jamie jones came out <laughs> well jamie jones and you know uh craig mullen started releasing i think um he worked on the he worked on the age of empires 
Yeah. And people saw that he, in some of his images, he was actually using photos. <laughs> and someone did like, I think it was on Reddit or 4chan. They found, uh, uh, they found I think it was one of his paintings from Fallout. And, mm -hmm. uh, and someone found actual references that he used, like actual photos, like one-to-one. -one. And the outrage was real, man. Like, oh my God, Craig Mullins is using references. What? Because uh. <laughs> <laughs> everyone wants to be like a purist, you know? Like, oh, yeah. Like, you, if you don't, if you don't know how, you don't know how to paint. You're, you're an asshole, basically. <laughs> yeah, there were like really good artists that used references, and you could tell that they were using references. But for some reason, everyone was just like, "You're not an artist if you're doing that." And you know, there was there were some portrait artists. I can't remember the names. It was um, it was this girl? I think Linda Berkfist or something like that clearly using photos for her for her work but then mm -hmm. like everyone was just so butthurt when they realized that she does that you know it's like what the fuck she's yeah like, she's just an artist like she's just doing what she wants to do like what's the big deal you know but it yeah, used to be a big deal it was crazy it's crazy like use it like it's, it's about how you're using that photo right yeah it doesn't because matter. yeah exactly yeah yeah, and the good artists are not just copying the surface of that photo that you're looking at because they're trying to understand what's going on and only yeah. extract, extracting the things that he wants to use and learn from it. It's, yeah. it's, it's about perfection, right? When it's for you to, uh, especially you're doing a painting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's one of those things that I personally think... Uh, so let's get one thing out of the way, and I, I'm pretty sure you can agree that you have to know foundation. Like you have to understand perspective. You have to understand lighting. You have to at least dabble a little bit in the in the anatomy when you're when you're painting characters to understand, you know, at least like proportions mm. of the character. Like at least, you know, just eyeball, okay, I mean the head should be probably smaller or bigger, you know. Yeah. That kind of stuff. You don't have to mm. be, you know, Andrew Loomis to paint yeah. characters you don't have to like deconstruct every character you, you're supposed to paint but just be good enough to understand it so that you know if you if you have to paint a character and then you have to repaint the same character in different pose you can mm -hmm. do it like you're not relying strictly on photos you know yeah totally because so, I, i'm pretty sure that craig mullen can just sketch be sketches all, already awesome but the only reason he's using reference is because he wants to make it perfect Undefined. Yeah, and, and faster yeah. too. You know, I mean, he has such a great background in traditional painting, and he yeah. he, he does a lot of like his own traditional paintings, and yeah. you know, uh, uh, you know, live paintings of of his family, or you know, just yeah. generally like you know, uh, fig figurative art. Uh, he does that a lot, and I, I I I hope he does still does it. I'm you know, we I don't know. I haven't really talked with him, but. Um, but he used to do it a lot and he, he would actually use his own paintings, um, to, as a sort of like backdrop for his digital paintings. Yeah. And I remember people were outraged about that too. It's like, Oh, you're using, uh, it's a fucking fake. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, it's Craig Mullins. So it's like, <laughs> it takes years to understand what he does. Right. Yeah. Stop being outraged. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> um, hey, but yeah, it's. Yeah, hey, much ahead, like, can can I guys like can I be back really quick? Yeah, no worries, no yeah, worries. Yeah, I'll be back really quick. Sorry. Yeah, no worry. Uh, I'll talk in the meantime when he's gone. He just disappeared in the shadows. Oh shit! John Park is here. God damn, he just joined when uh, when <laughs> when June decided to leave. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, talking about references and the outrage and whatnot yeah once you understand the uh the idea of uh you know you have to know foundation you know you don't have to be a perfectionist in it but if you have a good foundation it's much easier to uh, create any kind of work that you need to create so for instance if you rely on photos heavily because you need to uh, you want to have that good texture and you know you want to have the lighting information in it it's it's fine to do that uh, but if you don't understand how lighting works, for instance, then it's going to be really difficult for you to change the lighting of the photo or find the right photos to merge them together to have that backdrop for your painting that will be consistent in terms of the lighting. I see that happening a lot when you go 
we're on our <laughs> station and we're looking at June's uh, work. I'm not going to pollute this uh, beautiful stream with shitty work, but okay, you're back, dude. You're I'm back. back. Um, but I was saying, like, when you when you when you merge pictures together, and if you, if you don't understand lighting, then it's going to look like shit. And you can see that happening a lot. You know, you can see a lot of artists that are trying to skip that step of you know learning how the lighting works and learning mm-hmm. how how to understand references. You know, you, you can think about going outside and you know looking at the real world, and you should. By all means, do that. I actually had a Twitch stream with Eitan Zana, and we we talked about specifically that topic for an hour. You know, references and lighting. Yeah. Um, but reference, like one of those things, using references is like using, uh, making shortcuts to focus on something else. You know, it's like you want to make a design. The last thing you want to think about is lighting. If you want to make mm-hmm cool lighting the last thing you want to think is uh, think about is design you want to have this one area of focus and really focus on that to make it to make it perfect because the moment you that's why i feel like i was thinking illustration is easy for the longest time because i used to call myself illustrator before i called myself a designer but now i realize that the proper illustration actually takes all of those tropes tropes together because you have to think about everything you have to think about lighting composition you know, uh, style, all of those things, right? Would, yeah. would you agree? Yeah, I, I, I actually have the same thing. Like, for example, I have I have those eight pillars that I use, I wrote down. It's like, it's like a giant puzzle whenever you're trying to do a, like a painting. Like, you have to think about everything, like perspective, um, lighting, color value, design, everything. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely it's hard, yeah. Yeah, without that, it fucking sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah, it's it's very easy to to get lost when it in it, and you know when you can find that shortcut, why not? Like, what is what is the reason not to shortcut yourself to uh, to focus on something else and get that aspect better? Like, for instance, you know, I'm looking at this painting now, and I'm I'm pretty sure you can see it. You're gonna be able to see it with that lady and the and that panther, mm-hmm. or uh, yeah, I think it's the panther, right? Yeah, daughter, yeah, like daughter of yeah. daughter of Jupiter, dude. That painting is so sick. By the way, thank you. I fucking I almost spit on myself when I was saying it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's one of my, one of my favorites of yours because it's like it's so well uh, executed, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So, but you use references for it, obviously. It's not like oh, I painted it all from from head, you know. Um, you know what? Like I can I think I can share some of the process if you guys want. Yeah, yeah. Of course yeah. we want. Let's do it. Hold on a second. Um, let me make sure that uh, we can share your screen. So I'll make sure. Um, give me a so, second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can just share your screen on, on Skype, and we'll be able to see it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, John Park is saying, fuck you. Fuck you, June. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you too, John. <laughs> fuck you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, John, on behalf of June. <laughs> this is always good to say fuck you too, John. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, like, you know, like I have like a company loaned um macbook right now and like i'm i'm not a mac guy so it's still so hard don't don't you worry uh, open with it's funny to see all the reactions on the on the chat because they're like delayed because the stream stream is like what you, what you see on a stream is actually about 45 seconds later than we yeah, yeah you see that yeah, it's on purpose. I, I think it's because it's more, more stable when you do it that uh, w- when you do it that way, and it's a YouTube thing. But, oh, yeah. Okay, there we go, and I'll share my screen. Yeah, let me do it in a sec. Hold on a second. Um, okay, here. Sure, Whenever you're ready, your full face is on the screen right now. Boom. Okay. okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay, so everybody's looking at the screen right now, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is this is my initial sketch, and look how it sucks. <laughs> so right, I mean, so here's the thing: like when you're sketching that kind of stuff, you're focusing on the, you're not focusing on making everything perfect, right? You're just focusing on the idea itself, and you're exactly. focusing on the composition and making sure that whatever people are gonna see in the final painting. It's gonna be having like a solid foundation to begin with, right? Yes. You know what? Like, I really, actually, don't want to share because if I look at the head of that leopard, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> it's <laughs> so obvious that I, I don't understand anything, and I haven't gone through research even yet. Uh, let's see but, all yeah. the embarrassing stuff. Let's do it. Yeah, man. Do but it. But anyway, like, yeah, this was my initial sketch, and it was pretty small, like two inches small. Mm-hmm. And so, and this is the next step. I and so I did some research and tried to be more practically make sense. Mm -hmm. So figuring out the scale, and when they walk up through the staircases, like does it do, try to make it not look awkward? Yeah, because that lever should be bigger and taking two steps instead of one step. Those are the things I'm thinking. Um, Got it. This on this stage, I'm doing a lot of research, so. Less images are more more like color palette, um, lighting, and mood. The right images are like um, lightings, composition, and the bottom ones are like practical understanding of those foldings and the dresses. Right. Um, this stage, I'm um, only trying to focus on the value structure and color palette. And I kind of locked there. Oops. And yes, and I'm I'm just adding more details, and work, start working on a face. This is a 3D model I used. Mm -hmm. So as you see, like I, I love using 3D, but I'm not professional. But <laughs> it's, yeah, this is kind of like the only amount I need um, for my painting because the only thing I need to understand is where the lighting comes from and what. Um, Paint plane is the brightest value based on the angle of the plane. Right. Yeah. So yeah. those yeah. are the only information I need to process the next step, which yeah, is you're looking at the value structure of of you know the basic forms, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For some reason, my book is slowed down. Okay. So for example, here I started working on the head. So the middle one is actually the the head I'm painting. The right one is a photo reference of the actress at Roseburn because I really wanted to use her facial structure. Yeah. Um, the thing is, first, it, it is almost impossible if you have a very specific idea in your head. Um, in this case, I have a very specific perspective angle and a very specific perspective lighting angle. And you'll never get a chance to find a perfect reference for that, right? Yeah, that's so, why you need foundation <laughs> or at yeah. least understanding. Exactly. Yep. And I almost found like 95% perfect photo, um, which is the right image. But I realized that it's slightly different because the angle of the perspective should be lower. Yeah. And I tried to just skew it in Photoshop, but it never works that way. So what I'm doing here is like look at this for the perspective and look at this for the lighting and trying to mix them while, while I'm painting it. That yeah. is freaking hard for me. <laughs> um, of course it is. Yeah, and after I'd done that, like I, re I really liked it, but when I look at the overall pose, it kind of felt wrong. So I realized, oh, okay, she needs to turn her head a little bit more. So I throw in the trash and do another one. Um, so it was, it was a long, long um, struggling with only with the face. Um, yeah, but, but you see, yeah. there's one thing about... I can hear myself. What the fuck? Uh, there's one thing about the... Um, the, the, this overall workflow that I, I I hope people start to understand is that you know it's very difficult to find that perfect photo and if you only rely on photos and you know and you think that that's that's what it is that's why people use references so therefore you can skip everything and just focus on photos mm -hmm. you're gonna end up with that you know one photo that you find that's eighty percent there and then you're not happy with it like what the fuck like it's not working and then you don't know how to change it because you don't understand uh you know uh the basics of you know how the lighting works and how the forms forms work and 3d helps and that's that's one of the reasons why the why you would use 3d yeah specifically for that because it, it gives you 
that information that you need that you need to have you know the the structure the the, the angle the the value structure that you know is coming from the lighting that is in 3d now another aspect of 3d is like you might think oh it's cheating too because you're using 3d yet um it is and it isn't because if you don't know how to use it then you're just gonna create something that looks equally crappy right exactly in, in 3d you have to understand lighting in order to put the lighting uh or create the lighting itself uh you know the position of the lamp or whatever position of the light the directionality of shadows and all of that that comes from the render mm -hmm. like it's just you you have to understand how the lighting works in order to understand whether this this kind of lighting that you're using is going to work with your painting at all you know exactly yeah dude it looks sick <laughs> thanks sick. it took me so long though <laughs> it took well, i was basically working one or two hours a day so i think it almost took me two months on and off but yeah that's how i finished it <laughs> but i like it. it it has like a really good composition reminds me a little bit of that frazetta uh style man thank you yeah it's you know Perfect. it's it Humble. has a proper amount of details and when you look at um when you look at portraiture and like when you look at art that was done in you know in renaissance or baroque like all of those master painters and you might think like oh my god they've been amazing in terms of creating faces and whatnot what people don't understand is that each of those paintings probably take I think they were roughly taking anywhere from three to like eight years <laughs> or yeah. something like that to make to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then it was not like it was a person standing in front of the, you know, in front of the painter. And that's how they painted the whole thing. It was like gazillions of sketches and freaking, you know, um, what, what else was there? Like sketches and, and you would have, um, paintings of uh you know of the face itself and then that would yeah. be in the se separate palette so it was almost like they would paint their own references or gather their own references based on you know what they could do which would take year would take years and then yeah. close themselves in the studio and use that to paint the you know the final result it's like almost looking at the snippets and figuring out the, how the snippet's going to work and then sort of like paint bashing them together <laughs> in a way. Exactly. <laughs> like, especially talking about painting, it's like painting is one of the oldest form of entertainment, you know? Like, yeah. That's so like, even though like we're faster than our old masters because of the help of the technology, actual process is pretty much just similar. It's yeah. just faster. Yeah. It is. It is definitely faster. It is mm -hmm. definitely faster with the computers, and you know, yeah. it's crazy because like your phone now nowadays, like the new iPhone, is faster than my, th than the computer that I used in two thousand seven. Oh man, it's so I, fucking I, crazy. Yeah, I don't even use other like ca digital cameras anymore. I just use my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have like uh, really good DSLRs and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. but. The only way I'm using it is for textures, like not yeah. even photos anymore. Like in some in some areas, photos, yeah, especially if, when you're traveling. And I I replaced my big ass bulky um, Canon camera with the the Sony Alpha cameras because they are like yeah. super light and super small. Mm -hmm. And I actually got this lens. Uh, it's 35 millimeter size. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like it's the size of. I don't know, like the uh, espresso cup or even smaller. Like it's super wow. small. It's super light. Like the whole thing weighs about the same amount of as iPhone, mm -hmm. but it's like super sharp. Um, yeah. Yeah. I would, it's, yeah. I, I don't, I don't even bother like using like big ass cameras and anything like that. Yeah. iPhone itself or even any of the other um, smartphones, they have such a good cameras now. It's yeah. insane. It's, it's insane. insane. I don't know how they do that. It's technology moving forward, dude. It's like, it's 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 crazy. I mean, there is so much tech behind everything that we know that we don't even realize, you know. I remember yeah. like 
I remember first time I started to to understand that aspect of technology in general is how fast it's moving and how uh, how much of the technology is hidden away from us. Yeah. And Google introduced the um, image search. Like you could mm -hmm. drag and drop an image and it's going to find similar images. Mm -hmm. And then, and they, you're just like, oh, it's cool. It's, you know, I'm going to do it. You know, you drag, you get an image that you found somewhere and you dra drag and drop it to Google uh, Chrome or something, right? To yeah. To search. And it's going to find the origin origins of this image. I know. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I tried that too. Yeah. Even Pinterest has a similar thing, right? I think so. Yeah. And okay. it's going to find the origin and also s similar looking images. Yeah. Right? So it's just crazy. It's so fucking crazy. And yeah. now, now the algorithm is getting so good that you have those similar, like similar images to the image you're searching. So let's say you're searching for, I don't know, jet engine. It's going to mm -hmm. find similar images of the same jet engine from different angles, different, you know, photographers and whatnot that have been posted anywhere online. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, it's it's the it's the the, the AI, the the way you know the the engine itself, it's learning itself. You know, it's fucking crazy mm -hmm. how fast this thing is moving. So, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. So when it comes to like photos and references and photographs and yeah, it's 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 exactly what everyone else was doing back then. We just have more tools that make us more lazy and faster. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, yeah, it, because we we're lazier and faster. Uh, it it might look shittier <laughs> than a yeah. So it basically it's like it's faster, but the core process has never changed. Yeah, it's all the same. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's because the same people, process, just faster. Yeah. yeah, because people who doesn't even know what digital art or Wacom tablet is, they just think like if we just click buttons, then painting will be done. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I remember. I remember. Uh, I remember hearing like, oh, it's photo bashing. Well, it's like I can do it myself too. Like I, I stopped reading comments like that a long time ago, but I've seen, I see them happening every now and then, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, but, like... but what's crazy is that, you know, and then you like, yeah, do it. Like by all means, go and do it, you know? And then people do it and it looks like shit. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, because photo bashing actually was invent invented by masters to reduce time. If you don't understand what their actual principles, how they make that make work that photo bashing is, then of course it's not going to look great, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically finding shortcuts for the things that you've done millions of times and you just don't yeah. want to do it again because it's just a waste of time at this point. Yeah. But it like like with everything, I think uh, the moment you open up doors to new technology or, or new systems that allow you to do impossibly awesome things, um, you also open up like a, a fluid gate of shittiness too. You know, <laughs> it's like when when social media started appearing. You know, like uh, Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Like everyone's like, oh, awesome! I connect. I can connect with everyone in the world, and you know, hear all of the opinions, which is great. But it also sucks because now all of the dummies can can you know voice their opinions too. Exactly. And you start to hear them a lot, and you feel like, oh, and the world is fucking getting insane because there's so many stupid people. <laughs> I don't think so. I think <laughs> we, we've been in this world of stupidness forever. Like we're just monkeys that are, are evolving a little bit too fast. That's true. Um, but now, like, majority of the monkeys have access to internet and can, can post their opinions. I think that that's the only thing that really changed. Yep. Maybe that's why I'm trying to stay away. We're just all you monkeys. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, you want to jump into some questions? We've been talking for, like, an hour and a half now. Holy fuck. Oh, yeah, already? Wow. Yeah, it's fucking time is flying. There was some few questions. Uh, I've seen them, guys. If you if you want, you can ask them uh, right now too. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll out. There was a few questions there uh, that I missed um, using the live chat from YouTube to make sure that I can ask questions. Um, hey guys, I have a question specifically regarding towards hard surface design. I have a hard time in detailing things, especially any kinds of more complex mechs, etc. How much in depth you go in? You go in trying to understand 
the function, why certain parts are arranged in a certain way, and how that impacts the properties of the object versus the versus just putting in some random details or taking parts off. Which is kind of funny because that's what most photo bashers do. <laughs> 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 that's how that's how um, that's how Mr. Concept Art appeared on the surface of Earth. <laughs> just <laughs> fucking poke on those people. <laughs> that was a genius. That was the best thing last year. <laughs> uh, it's funny, it died off. But what do you think about that? What is your opinion about that? I, I, I would say I'm not a good person to answer that question. I, I, I think Maché can answer that question much better than me. <laughs> you do have some good paintings, though, like the hard surface stuff, like that, uh, um, that biker that, lady. That is, yeah. Um, that is very um, professional question, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll answer it in very general terms, and maybe, maybe my answer will, will spark an idea for your answer. So the way the way t I personally look at hard surface and designing anything, just ge generally anything, whether it's hard surface details and whatnot, is thinking about function in the first place. So if you can find things functional um, and make things look functional, uh, it's already a good start. It's already a good foundation. It's like foundation of art, right? Like you, if you understand lighting and perspective and color, you, it's the chances are that the painting is going to be good. You know, it might not be perfect, but it's going to have like a good foundation to look good. Uh, same goes to design and same goes to, um, you know, hard surface design specifically. Uh, look at function and understand the function. And, you know, you're obviously going to bend the reality of things, right? If you're designing a spaceship, you're not going to look at, you know, because there are no spaceships out there. There are, you know, uh, space rockets, you know, NASA stuff, but that's far, far away from your, you know, Star Trek or something, right? Um, but even when you look at Star Trek, uh, Star Trek is actually one of the most scientifically accurate sci-fi genres where they, they tried to think about everything when it comes to, like, you know, how Fusion Engine would look like or, you know, like all of those things that might look futuristic, but they have sort of, like, scientific understanding behind it, right? When you look at good designers, when you look at fucking look at um, da Daniel Simon, for instance, the reason why his designs are fucking amazing is because you can clearly see the function of the things that he's painting or designing. Like the moment you look at it, you understand what it does. You don't have to think about it. You you understand by just looking at it. And if you don't clearly understand, because like maybe it's like a futuristic thing. Like, for instance, that orb-looking vehicle that he designed for Oblivion, right? Even though it's a futuristic uh, design, you still understand the function of it. You understand where the cabin is. You understand that that's where the pilot goes in. You look at the, uh, the other parts of the, you know, there's like two side orbs. Those are the engines, right? Um, so you look at the whole design, like the whole package, and you understand the function right away. But also he uses principles of the design it, itself, like you know the balance, the the uh, the weight, the you know the harmony, all of those typical you know your standard textbook um, principles of the design to make things look beautiful as well, you know. And that's something you learn over time. And some people get better at it, and some people get aren't, you know. So that's that's how I look at it. It's understanding the world. And understanding the function in the first place, and then using principles of the design to uh, strengthen uh, the look, you know, not just like pull things together and pfft, works. That, that, that usually doesn't. You have to sort of like think about the general terms. Like some lines going to be thicker than the other ones. You, you're not going to space details evenly because that's going to look like shit. Uh, you're gonna use rhythm. You're gonna, you know, space specific aspects. Maybe some details gonna be in the uh, one place, but not the, uh, on the other. So it creates this asymmetrical look. Um, there's just so many, so many things you can try and do, but it all comes with um, experience. I think. What do you think? Oh, totally. <laughs> I, I knew. Did you gonna, hear that, guys? <laughs> did you hear that, guys? I knew you're gonna answer it that way. Fuck. <laughs> 
You know what? Like, all good, like all good. so, so much. I like pulled out the, that bike girl image I did. Like, so like when I was doing that, I, I because I barely, I'm not good at hard surface and that, but I wanted to do something with the bike because bike was so cool. But as you see, like my bike design is pretty much in the safe zone. Like it's yeah. it's just a little bit little bit of twist from the original bike. But even though I'm doing that, I needed to understand how bike works. And I ended up I was first I was look because I was lazy, I was looking at like free three D bike models, but then I couldn't find a good one. So <laughs> I ended up actually buying a Tamiya uh, bike um a plastic model, which is a pretty damn good details. Nice. So yeah, I learned a lot about the bikes through my um, plastic model bike. Uh, that hey, was if my. Wanna, if you yeah, want to yeah. get like super duper detailed, fucking insanely detailed, I'm actually gonna pull it up because um, I found some bikes that are insanely detailed, insanely detailed. By the way, uh, so if you go to GrabCat, I'm gonna pull it up in a second. Can't wait so that to people see. Can see it. Yeah. Let me pull it up right here. So you, June, you're probably gonna see it in the with the delay, but mm -hmm. let's see. I'm gonna try. Yeah, this one. Yeah, Ducati Ducati Monster. <laughs> that is like this. This bike is like a full CAD file, like STP, 300 megabytes. When you when you pull it up and convert it to polygons is like two gigs or something has all the freaking screws everything's there <laughs> it's fucking insane it's an actual like you could print it and probably make it work <laughs> actually did you sh uh, share screen oh there you go okay i can see yeah, now you're gonna see it on the stream <laughs> it's fucking insane like i i i find those things randomly and i'm like just like oh, i don't i don't have i don't like i personally don't have like patience to build stuff that way you know what hold on a second i'll, I'll, me sh I'll let me show you my model <laughs> I yeah do it. it do it um i just want to give a proper credit to uh so yeah this is tiago pereira that's the guy yeah. who made it and it's i see fucking awesome and you can download this thing that is the most <laughs> insane part you can just like download this thing it obviously has like um I think it has some copyright stuff. You would have to look into a GrabCat, GrabCat community. I think they have some rules when it comes to uh, using the stuff that you, people are sharing. Mm. I don't think you can re redistribute. So like if you take it and start putting it up on fucking Turbo Squid, not only you're an asshole, but also probably breaking the law. So <laughs> don't do that. But yeah, yeah, this thing is amazing. Uh, anyways, yeah, show us. Uh, let me actually. Yeah, this is uh, one of my bike models. This is also Ducati, uh, I guess. Yes. This is, by the way, like cheaper version. Damn. This that was is awesome. Like, yeah, this was like 20 bucks or something, so not bad. That is awesome. Yeah, but I got this one, which is pretty damn detailed. Damn. Can you... Yeah, yeah. I can see it now. Yeah, this, this one is Hell a yeah. really details so yeah but those are the things i bought but it, it was totally worth it it was a fun learning time yeah man it's all, it looks awesome it's and it's practical and it's fun the fun part is like you can you know set up your own lighting and take some iphone photos and boom you're ready to go yeah man like <laughs> that's how ready so ilm people did their magic yeah yeah <laughs> that's how they did it that's how they did it uh, for those who are listening this on iTunes later on, you can always go to the YouTube channel and see it all on the screen. So good. Okay, let's me see, let me see if there's other questions because they are. June, what are your go-to tools for creating your images? 3D, Photoshop. Are there any software out there that you want to learn that you don't know uh, already? So I only know. Um um, Photoshop and Maya now, um, and trust me, like re like since last year, I feel um, I really feel like I'm getting out of the league. You know? <laughs> like everybody's using such a new tools, which is way better. Um, and like I feel like getting older, seriously. <laughs> but 
yeah, the Maya and Photoshop are, are my main tools I use. I mean, it's you already use 3D, so you're good. I mean, you should be good for for a while. I don't think uh, mm. I don't think you're getting out of any leagues. Uh, there's okay. a lot of artists that don't use 3D, <laughs> and they are getting out of leagues very very uh, sh sh you know. Sure, they're surely getting out of leagues soon. Maybe yeah. not now. And it depends what you do. If you work in the industry, in some video games uh, areas, you don't have to learn 3D just yeah. yet. In the film, you absolutely have to learn 3D. Oh. Unless, you, unless you're John Park. Because um, <laughs> 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 then you don't need to make 3D renders because you can sketch faster than the fucking 20 GPUs. So... Um, but you then, know what? <laughs> I think John just started learning 3D. Yeah, he did. He did. And yeah. like I, that was the day I saw him doing it, and I was like, "Oh my god, this day finally came!" You know, <laughs> everybody was like, "No, we're all John doomed." Apocalypse. <laughs> John Apocalypse is happening! Damn it! <laughs> yeah. No, everyone is. I mean, most of the artists that. I admire they already are in some capacity you know either learning or already know a little bit of 3d there are some outliers out there that just don't give a fuck but they're just good enough to not give a fuck at all so yeah um, but there is also like the whole area of um, when you go on Instagram right you, you you have your account on Instagram right yeah, yeah. Um, what is your handle I actually gonna post it up in the comments so anyone who's listening can subscribe to that stuff um, but if you go on Instagram, there's like ton of artists that you don't normally see on the art station or any of those places. And they live off, you know, uh, selling prints and sharing art and being in the galleries and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they don't work in like, you know, big companies and anything like that. So it's kind of fascinating because if you're, oh. if you're a personality and you have great art, you don't have to work for games or films or, you mm -hmm. know illustrations for like game cards or something like that mm -hmm. you can just do whatever you want like the, the cool stuff you want to do and live of that which is great because it's just like a full expression of yourself at that point yeah you know, you're not sort of like conforming your your style and work to others but more to you know what what do you like to do so exactly um anyways, by the way john is saying do my 3d sucks balls well you well you know what John you should be <laughs> <laughs> Is it only your three D sucking balls or something else? Uh, or maybe your mouth too. <laughs> too far? Too far. Too far? Yeah, no, I'm with, that's all good. I'm with that's all good. You, I know you're with me. It's yeah. all good. We can team up and fuck him up. <laughs> yeah. Uh no, it's all off. I mean John is John Park. So our good friend, so he understands. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, and then next tomorrow I get phone call from a producer. I've heard you've been, been insulting <laughs> some of the fellow workers. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> um, any advice to someone who's interested in doing environments? What do you what uh, you would have advice to yourself when you were starting? Also, what do you think about the importance of line drawing? Um, wow, tough, good question. Like, in terms of, like, importance of line drawing, like, I think I personally learned, think, started to think the importance of line drawing, like, in, like, recently, two years ago. So, actually, I'm doing more line works rather than um, touching 3D. It's not really about good or bad. It's just, I think it's much fun for me now. Um... But, you know, like, after, like, whatever tool works really good for you, I think that could be your strength. Um, right. So, yeah. So if that's 3D is your thing, if, if you can model faster and that if you can express yourself better with that tool, that will, that's your thing. Um, I remember back in the days, I actually got a main major advice from Jung Park because uh, Jung was actually kind of my mentor back in the days, like, because I wanted to do something like him. And John was like doing a lot of environments, um, so that's what maybe that was one of the part that I w actually start to focus on environment paintings because right. I kind of liked it, liked it too. Um, 
for environments like you need to lot um you, mainly it's like two things like you need to understand like like the nature environment like how terrain looks but also it's a lot about the architecture so for example i went through a lot of studies for architecture even though i'm not an architect at all but then you need to cover all the era from medieval to futuristic and it's right. a hell lot of work but yeah, that's kind of like the requirements for concept artists. Like it requires so many things, but you need to do it. Um, but yeah, like and um, like technical uh, technique wise, like when you're trying to do environments, um, I think understanding perspective is like just the foundational basic. It's so important. Um, also, like just look at a lot of photos of beautiful photos of with lightings and stuff. That'll really help you understanding what kind of what kind of value structure is, like color structure yeah. is, yeah, those kind of things. But at the end, always the hardest, like the boss level hard hardest, is always the design. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's so much easier now to render anything. You know. Yeah. Uh, you can see a lot of artists that are amazing at rendering. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's just harder and harder to, because you have to focus on the design. You know. Yeah. You have to get to understand it and. If you don't, then you know it's gonna suffer. Yep. Um, you're not gonna stand out. Let's put it this way. It's it's more important to stand out these days than in, than any any time before. So. Um, I agree, hundred uh, percent. Do 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 do. Let's get one more question, maybe, and we're gonna wrap it up. What do you think? Yeah. Cool. Um, showing your process for the woman and the leopard. Uh, you used photos and 3D in your process. Is there anything you want to get better at, such as 3D tools, 3D code, ZBrush, Marvelous Designer, etc.? Oh, I definitely want to learn ZBrush. Um, uh, because it, uh, it's, it's, it's about the process. So, like, for example, like, I'm, I'm really bad at, like, creatures because, like Maché just said, like, the requirement... Um, the level uh, is required to um, talk about the quality is so high now. So like just doodling sketches about creatures is not enough. And yeah. so I really want to learn um, how to sculpt really good and fast and so that I can use for my um, concept parts. That, that will be my next goal. But I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Maybe I'm so lazy. I'm going to pull up this thing here. Now you're going to see it too. But... Yeah, we have a ZBrush course and learn squared, obviously. Well, obviously. Um, by Alex learn. Vigini. Yeah, Alex Vigini, who works over at... Uh, gosh, where where does he work? He works at... Um, what is that place? Bioware. Yeah, he's, oh. uh, he's, oh. a, he's a 3D concept artist at Bioware. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did this fucking epic course uh, on ZBrush and Marvelous Design. Like, everything that was in that question... Is exactly in that course. <laughs> it's insane. It's one of the one of the heaviest courses on the on the site too. Super super shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah this uh, this podcast is sponsored by Learn Square, the company that I own. So <laughs> that looks damn good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm obviously uh, you know I, I I love this course. I, I I've taken it myself. Not every single thing, because I already sort of like know some of those tools pretty good, but I've learned a ton um, in terms of like getting some of my rusty ZBrush skills to mm -hmm. uh, to a better point. So yeah, yeah. Alex is also an awesome guy, and uh, yeah, he had a Emmanuel shoe. He was uh, his apprentice. Emmanuel was one of the guests on the on the podcast. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let me close this stuff. Yeah, but you should you should maybe look into that. Maybe, who knows? Yeah, man. Who knows? It's a, it's a pretty good course. It's funny because it's sure. pretty hard to Post. find good education out there. And yeah, you know, you're teaching over at Brainstorm. So, uh, are you planning to open up new classes later on, or because uh, you I know you have one that that is ongoing right now with Brainstorm. Is there mm -hmm. any plan for? The future classes where you're gonna open up more seats or anything like that like what is the situation there because i think someone also asked if you have gum roads and stuff like that 
Oh, yeah. There was a time I was trying to make more gum rolls, but um, just my personal life right now is pretty much um, like packed with a lot <laughs> of stuff. So I just don't have time. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I would I would love to have more gum rolls. I, I, I guess maybe I'm just lazy. Have you done any before? or? I have one gum roll with that tree image I oh, had. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it is really simple. Yeah. Yeah, maybe uh maybe after the stream just send me a link. I'll I'll include it in the in the description. So we'll mm -hmm. see. Maybe maybe you're gonna huh. get that one sale. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> from my from my major audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, let's wrap it up here. Uh dude, it was n nice to talk with you again. Yeah, and yeah, nice to talk to you. Yeah. It's you been might a while. you might see me again soon. Yeah, we over should. There. We'll see. We'll see. If it, not yep. if not we'll grab a coffee or something. Yeah, we should. Days. Let's uh, do that. Yeah, let's do it. Thanks for everyone who joined live and uh, really appreciate it. Um, and for supporting the show, obviously by being here and watching the video. And obviously if you're listening to it as a podcast and iTunes and whatnot, thanks for doing that too. Any download, subscription, anything like that helps. So if you like the show, obviously subscribe to the channel, spread the love, the word everything like that um i do also have patreon uh for this channel as well it's patreon.com slash forward slash art cafe tv if you like the show if you want to support it you're not obligated to do it i'm gonna be keep doing it regardless but it does help to get like better equipment and whatnot so um uh, yeah outside of that uh thanks for everyone for being here next week we're gonna have your boss, <laughs> yeah. Eduardo, Eduardo. Uh, Eduardo Gonzalez, uh, to join uh, the stream. Oh, by the way, last question: Are you going to teach you this year? No, I'm not <laughs> this year. All right. Are you? Yeah, I'm going. I'm gonna be oh, speaking, damn. speaking at THU this year. So awesome! It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be interesting. I know Kenny Carvalho is going, and Eduardo yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, those two yeah. guys. There's a yep. bunch of. There's usually a bunch of Riot Games guys going there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like cool. around. Around seven to eight, I guess, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll probably hang out with those guys and drink some beers. And Yeah, drink some beers, man. <laughs> I don't and... drink, dude. That's kind of crazy. I, I, really? I'm not a drinker. Yeah, I'm, I might socially drink every now and then, but that's it. Mm. I, I, I hate drinking. I don't know. It's something about <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to wrap it here. Thanks, guys. Okay, cool. And I'll see you Thanks next you week. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye -bye. See ya.